Good afternoon, my name's Aaron Sachs, and uh, I'm the Surgical Fellow at the Minnesota Institute for Minimally Invasive Surgery. I'm presenting today on endoluminal functional luminant imaging probe as a tool to standardize anti-reflux surgery. I have no disclosures or uh, financial incentives to uh, disclose at this point. Uh, as most of you know, gastroesophageal reflux disease is very common. It affects up to 20% of the population, and the economic impact has been estimated to be in the billions of dollars. Not only does it impact quality of life, but it can lead to complications such as Barrett's esophagus and subsequently esophageal cancer. Anti-reflux surgery continues to play an important role as medical management is not without disadvantages and further doesn't correct the anatomic problem. Tenets of anti-reflux surgery have been, one, reducing any hiatal hernia, two, restoring intra-abdominal esophagus, and three, completing a curl repair and fundification. But if you read a text, you'll come across multiple ways to do it. Some surgeons use a bougie, some don't. You'll read, make it floppy or not too tight. But what does any of that really mean? The endoflip, or endo function, endoluminal functional lumen imaging probe, has the potential to answer this question. It's a flexible balloon catheter that's placed transorally. The balloon is inflated with saline, and it can give real-time measurements such as pressure, diameter, or distensibility index. More specifically, you can look at the diameter of the LES itself and the distensibility index there. In Minnesota, we use it to calibrate our coral closure as well as fundiplication and placement of links. So we wanted to evaluate our protocol for coral repair and fundiplication in order to begin a standardization. To do this, we had to determine typical LES diameter, distensibility index, and balloon pressure values during anti-reflux surgery. Nissen's toupees and links specifically. We also wanted to look at the effects of pneumoperitoneum as well as positive pressure ventilation on the measurements. So we would have anesthesia pass the endoflip balloon uh, transorally after we completed the dissection. It was inflated with 30 mLs of saline and we obtained measurements at three key points. One, post dissection, two, post curl repair, and three, post fund application or placement of the links. For our measurements, the majority were with pneumoperitoneum released down to six millimeters of mercury and respiration suspended, but a first subset of our data, we compared 15 millimeters of mercury to six, as well as with and without respirations. And we conducted a retrospective analysis of prospectively collected data, excluding revisional cases, cases where measurements were incomplete, where the balloons were inflated to a different value. We identified 69 patients over about a year. 42 patients were looked at when the exclusion criteria were identified. Most were female. The age range was 29 to 80 years old. And most procedures, the vast majority, included a formal hiatal hernia repair versus a simple chloroplasty if the diagnosis of hiatal hernia had not been present. This is a pretty busy slide, but I'd like you to focus on the red and the yellow primarily. Here is our first set of data comparing measurements at 15 millimeters of mercury to six as well as with and without respirations. And I'll draw your attention to the primarily 15 versus six. And in here, the respirations were suspended. You can see that the endoflip <coughs> measurements were significantly changed throughout basically the whole time and specifically the distensibility index. Respirations seemed to affect the measurements, but these weren't as significant and it was more of a surgeon operator uh, thing to see the respirations cause variations in the measurements, making them harder to actually characterize. Shown here were all of our results for all of our patients. So once we saw that lowering the pneumoperitoneum and holding respirations was the way to take our measurements, we did the rest that way. And you can see again a lot of significant data, most highlighted with the distensibility index. We found that balloon pressures or increased with the coral repair and fundiplication, that the LES diameter decreased with coral repair but not after fundiplication, and DI de decreased progressively post-repair and again post-wrap. Our final indices were 2.7, 2.3, and 2.1 respectively for a toupee, Nissen, and Lynx. One of the other things we do at Minnesota Institute for Million Invasive Surgery is use the endoflip as a bougie itself. And we uh, created a maneuver dubbed the Pillsbury Doughboy, which we show here. 
And on the left panel, you can see the endofoot balloon inserted after dissection and inflated. You can't quite make out the numbers, but the uh, brightest kind of orangey color is the lowest distensibility and kind of the skinniest corresponds to the lower esophageal sphincter. In the middle panel, you see a laparoscopic instrument indenting where the surgeon estimates the LES to be. And on the right, you see the change. And you can see here our estimation was actually a little high because now there's two bumps where the orange is showing decreased distensibility. And so the surgeon can find the exact LES. So by doing this, the surgeon can make sure the wrap is centered on the GE junction. And by doing this, the surgeon can place the stitches more precisely. Using the distensibility index and the other measurable parameters, the surgeon can also calibrate the repair and adjust on the fly. In other words, if the DI is too low or too high, another stitch can be placed, another can be removed, or one can redo the wrap entirely. So although it was a small study, we came to a number of conclusions. First, increased abdominal pressure of pneumoperitoneum lowers distensibility index and elevates balloon pressures. We found positive pressure ventilation to affect the measurements as well, not quite as significantly, and it more affected the variability. We therefore felt that to measure endoflip intraoperatively, pneumoperitoneum should be released and respiration should be suspended. The endoflip is an exciting technology that has the potential to standardize anti-reflux surgeries. It's a safe, soft, and atraumatic bougie. You can identify the lower esophageal sphincter with pinpoint accuracy, no longer using an estimate, and calibration of the repair and wrap is now possible. As you can probably see, a lot of work still needs to be done. Multi-center and randomized controlled trials are needed to agree on standards. We didn't look at patient positioning, liver retraction, or mesh. We didn't look at revisional cases or Collis Nissen or how these numbers might vary. And probably most importantly, outcome studies, for instance, looking at dysphagia scores and corresponding to distensibility index to better standardize exactly your target are needed, maybe with and without bougies versus endoflip. But overall, we believe it's an excellent atraumatic bougie that can help calibrate the repair. I thank you for your attention. Here's my references. I'll take any questions at this time.